wisdom and insight for worship leaders and music teams all around the world. For more details, email the well at planetshakers.com. Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of The Well. Hello everybody. Yes. Now there's somebody missing today. Yes, the holidaying. Yes, Mr. Joth Hunt indeed is on a holiday. So nice. uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's having a little time off. I'm sure he's having a great time too. Yes. But we are having an excellent time because we of course are here in the studio Coming to you live from Melbourne. Live from Melbourne. Well, it won't be live for you, but anyway, it's live for us. Yeah, it's live for us. <laughs> now, today's episode is something on quite funny, right? It's about... Hair? Hair. Hair. It's actually about hair. But before we get to that, you can check yes. us out on Instagram uh -huh. and, um, you know, something else because I'm... <laughs> Facebook. Facebook, that's it. Uh, <laughs> this is so slick. And uh, Twitter. Oh, uh, and Twitter. Twitter and Instagram at the well underscore Planet Shakers and Facebook, The Well, Planet Shakers. No, because it's not quite right. <laughs> the Well underscore PS for Instagram and Twitter. The Well dash Planet Shakers for Facebook. You heard it first here, guys, what he said. So, yes, please be sure to check us out on social media. And, uh, yeah, that's really good. So let's talk about last weekend. Yes. Of course, we had church. We did have church. And... Um, Myself and Joth were leading in our main campus and we had a great time in Melbourne for services. Um, we started learning a new song mm. and that was in rehearsal. We were going through it as we were going through it. Um, I, it just wasn't sitting right in my heart and even though the musos and singers had learnt it and um, we'd spent time rehearsing it, for whatever reason, I don't know, it just didn't sit right in my heart. So, BJ, mm. I did something crazy. I said, let's not do it. And so I suppose um, for many people out there that would be quite unusual to come and rehearse something, tell everyone this is the song that we're going to do, but for whatever reason in my heart I just didn't feel right. And I think we've got to make those decisions, we've got to make those calls. Yeah. And so VJ is the writer of that song, so I had to send him a little SMS. Yes. Say, VJ, hope you don't mind. <laughs> but we've, we've canned the song for now. Yes. And what was your response? My response was um, I was actually really relieved because I felt like um, we really pushed super hard to get that out really quick. Um, but the, the, the seed of that song, I feel, is, is really incredible. And I felt if we had have got that song out um, last Sunday, I actually think its shelf life would have been really short. Mm -hmm. And so we have the opportunity now to go back and tweak it and really give it the life it deserves, I, I think. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. But my heart response was like, yes, thank you, Pastor Sam, awesome. Good job, BJ. Love it. Of course, that would be a challenge for many people. Yeah. And they could think I'm rejected or I'm a loser. Yeah. Or something worse, like that we're, we're not happy with that person or whatever. But yeah. it's not. It's just going by what Holy Spirit wants to do on that day and, and not always pushing our own agenda, but to be open to whatever He wants to do. And so we did that on Sunday and I think, you know, the results were that people got saved and touched yeah, and really God amazing. moved. And, really amazing. And so it's always great to go with what he wants to do. But you were at another campus. I was at another campus. Um, I was at the Northeast campus, uh, which is um, out in the Northeast. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a revelation. And yes. it's um, it was a great morning, a really uh, strong morning of breakthrough. And um, uh, it's, you know, constantly with our campuses, it's all about um, raising those people up into musicianaries, you know, and, and, and all of these people are, you're all awesome if you're watching today, you are musicianaries, but it's always taking people to the next level. And um, I remember in the rehearsal really working quite specifically on vocals. So get, getting the BVs to really sing tightly together, to blend, not just to sing um, as loudly as possible, but to really just be conscious of each other, being really tight as a, as a, Unified group. Great. Yeah. 
So that was the weekend. That was the weekend. But shall we tell everybody what the topic is? I mean, not tell everyone, go into detail on this wonderful topic that we are going to be sharing with them. Hair. 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 Hair? Hair. Hair. Like you mean this kind of hair? I mean this kind of hair. (laughs) I have a feeling I'm really going to regret that. But yes, today we are going to talk about hair and put that away. it's been amazing over the years because we've <laughs> filmed so much of Planet Shakers. We are actually talking about hair. We have <laughs> had this wonderful opportunity to archive for all history um, the wonderful journey of our hair yes. and our hairstyles and... Yeah, it's been amazing. So throughout this episode, you'll see some wonderful hairstyles. That Look, I really think we've... it's good for the heart. <laughs> it's good for the heart. But what are we going to tell people about hair? Because lots of people have asked questions of Joth. Mm. How mm. do you do your hair, Joth? So even though he's away, we are going to hear from Joth today and he is going to tell us how he does his hair. Over to you, buddy. All right, guys, Joth here. I've just had a shower, you can see my hair's nice and wet. Get a comb, give that a run through just to make sure the hair's nice. Now, the next step is getting the old hair dryer out. The better the hair dryer, the better end product you're gonna end up with. This is not a great hair dryer because it's not mine. So, but we'll see what we can do with it. Here we go. This hair dryer is not actually too bad, it works okay. Now, the secret, guys, is this stuff right here, uppercut. You can get three different types. The light grey is the matte finish, the red one is the gloss finish, and the dark grey one is the, um, is the, no, another one. Anyways, that's what it looks like. I've almost finished, need some more. Think about that much. Ooh. Rub that all over my hands like that. Just lightly. Very lightly, guys. Not too much. Now, I've almost finished my hair in under a minute and a half. So it doesn't have to take too long. You just give it a bit of shaking. And it helps to have a good haircut as well. But now I would say that's pretty much ready to go, ready to roll. Well, then what I'd need to do is a bit of hairspray just to lock it in place, which I don't have on me. But uh, shh, take it by faith. Now it's locked in, ready to rock out on stage. It's as easy as that, guys. Yeah, thanks, mate. That's really good. Really Amazing. Good. Thank you. That's re- very helpful, very yeah, helpful. Yeah, I'm going to try that this week, I reckon. I'm going to get some of those products and do that. <laughs> Let's talk about that. your hair, BJ. Hey, look, well, my hair has been about um, all about the barber cut for about three, four, five years. Five years, I reckon. I've had the same haircut. Wow. But previous to that, it was a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell us the journey of your hair. So uh, when my wife met me about eight <gasps> years ago. You had long hair. I had long hair down mm. to about here and across my face. <laughs> and there was a use of a straightener. Now I do believe, straightener. I do believe that should not be done. <laughs> Why is that? 
Oh, look, it's just my suggestion. I would never put that on anyone. I would never force. I would never, I would hate to control anybody into that. But it would be my suggestion that maybe, maybe you don't use a straight, just go a la naturelle. It's Do you wonderful. Think? Yeah, I think so. Okay, what about Pastor Rudy? He's had a number of <laughs> hair changes over the years. We would yeah. love to show you some of his hair styles. Check this out. Pastor Rudy, looking mighty fine there. Why don't you take a look at some of the other members of the band too? Pretty funny stuff. Wow, our band mm. are amazing. amazing. Like those hairstyles, wow, what can I say? Wow. <laughs> We're just so cutting edge. On the edge of, of cutting. <laughs> so, look, we all go through stages, don't we? we and go we through all stages. think at the time that we are so cool. At different ages, we go through stages. Yes. Thinking. And then yeah. we think that we're so amazing with our hairstyles. <laughs> what would be our advice to people about hair? Do you know what? This is what I've, this is the conclusion I've come to, Pastor Sam. This is the you conclusion. You tell me, BJ. If you go for the super duper trendiest trend, yes, that you may not be trendy forever. <laughs> that you may yes. be superseded by another trend. So true. So what I'm saying, what are you saying, BJ? What am I saying? I'm, what I what I am saying is, go for timeless. Timeless, go like myself. Timeless. Straight, straight, straight. So timeless. <laughs> so timeless. A bit boring, really. No, but... timeless. Timeless. <laughs> well, to be honest, though, with with all the things that we do in church. What we try and do at Planet Shakers is that we try and appeal to every single person. So, say for example. An older person is coming into a church with um, the way we are dressed, the way we are carrying us, ourselves, with the, with the hairstyle that we have. We don't want to alienate any kind of group or um, age group or taste or style. We want every single person to be open to the Spirit of God moving. And so at times we choose to take the middle of the road in terms of what we are wearing, the way we um style our hair or with what sort of jewellery we're yeah. wearing or the way we might pierce or tattoo our bodies. We try and really take the middle ground and the reasoning behind that is that, yeah, we don't want to alienate someone coming into a church. So if what we're wearing, if our hairstyles or um, how we're carrying ourselves isn't even an issue, it doesn't even stand out, you know, it's quite neutral, mm. then what we're doing is we're, we're just making someone's focus not a person or a style or um, an era. We're making the focus all about the encounter with God. And so that's why it's really important for us to, you know, make good choices. And we at Planet yeah. Shakers, we like to just choose the middle ground. For sure. Actually, this might sound a little bit weird, but I find that it's part of my worship. Like getting ready in the morning. Mm -hmm. this, this is going to sound a bit crazy, but just putting some intentionality into what I'm going to wear for the day, yeah. like a, a part of the bigger picture of I'm going to lead people and, you know, it, it's just a part of my worship. God, I'm getting dressed up for you today. I know yes. that sounds bizarre. Bizarre, but it's part of my worship. I really kind of enjoy that. <laughs> it's so true because everything that we do on the stage is for the Lord. It's not for us to be noticed or recognised or even approved of by the world that we have the latest trends. For you know, sure. It's not about that. It, it's about always leading people into an encounter with God. And so, yeah, maybe that's a good thing to think about. That totally. when you're preparing yourself for church on a Sunday, you're saying, okay, what's going to look good for you, God? Yes, for and sure. And doing a hair for God. <laughs>
Maybe I should have thought of that a long time ago. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Who knew that we could do this? Every um, week we love to share with you what God has laid on our hearts and while we've been having a little bit of fun today with hair and what we look like and looking at past photos of, of our crazy hairdos, um, we would love to share with you what's on our heart. But today we're going to hear from Joff. Hey guys, Joff here up in Noosa, Queensland on holiday, but I still want to share with you from my heart in this lovely serenity here. And, you know, I woke up this morning and I was praying about what I could share with you and the word promotion came in mind and I looked up in the Bible and Psalm 75 verse 6 says that promotion doesn't come from anywhere else but from God. And we re also read in the Bible that says everything you do, do unto the Lord. So really, no matter what we're doing, we should do it unto the Lord and trust him to be the promoter. In everything that we do, you know, we want to go to a greater level. We want to, do, we want to become the next best thing that we are doing. And... Uh, you know, rather than looking to natural circumstances or the natural boss to try and upgrade us, you know, rather than sucking up to the boss or trying to just get favour from the boss, just put our trust in God and allow him to be the promoter because that is the best thing that we can do. And it comes, and it's the same thing with, uh, you know, worship leading. You might be a BV and, and you're really wanting to be a, a, a worship leader, be the front person. Well, first of all, ask yourself why. Well, what are the motives behind that? And then second of all, put your trust in God. Don't, don't try to suck up to the, the, the music director or the senior pastor or anything like that. But really put your trust in God because he's the one, at the end of the day, who will promote the right person at the right time. So keep a soft heart and keep trusting in God and it'll be great. Cool. So every week on The Well, we like to hear from you, love to hear your questions and thoughts. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email us in at the well. Um, the well at planetshakers.com. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha right there. So um, yeah, email us your questions, but we've got a few here today. And one is from Daryl Ballesteros from the Philippines. Hey, hey. Daryl. Uh, he says, hey, Planet Shakers team. Um, I have here a few questions on how you handle people who have work outside of church who are still in ministry. Do you have any tips or encouragement on how to handle uh, them serving in church? Pastor? Well... Of course, we love everyone to serve in church and um, we rely heavily upon people's generosity in being volunteers. So, of course, we have an understanding of people's work schedules so they can't always make it here or there. So mm. we try and be flexible in that way. But then, of course, we do have certain requirements of them. So being at discipleships is one Um being on the roster when, when they are mm. rostered. But then again, it's just communication between us and them to navigate their schedules and the demands that they have on their normal working life and yeah. family and and uh, making sure that they're able to serve well and then serve their family and serve their workplace. So we communicate a lot um, with the individuals. Um, and then I think making sure that um, we have a mentality that everything is unto the Lord. Yeah. And so trying sure. not to separate work and church, two different elements of our lives. No, they're one thing. We're doing it all to the Lord. And so that's why I, uh, where I think we can have our freshness and our and our enthusiasm in all areas of life when we realise we're working for the Lord and we're volunteering at church for the Lord and and where we don't feel too strained if, if we're called upon to volunteer on a church day. It's like, well, this is just another time, another occasion where I can worship the Lord with what I'm doing. Yeah, for sure. And we've got a brilliant team that does that well, right? Yeah. They're amazing. We've got another question here from Janelle. Uh, and Janelle is from Northern California. How are you doing, Janelle? Hi, Janelle. I have a few, few questions for a you. Few, few. A few, few questions. First, how do you rotate your musicians for Sunday services? And second, what do you do so your voice doesn't go hoarse after mm. Sunday services on a Sunday? Great wow. questions. Wow, very good question. Mm. We can start with the roster. Yeah, sure. Um, so DJ does the roster. I do the rosters here at Planet Shakers, and that is a big job. I do it with Steph Ling, actually. Steph is a person in our uh, team, and she helps me out with that. Uh, so what we do with rosters is basically I'm trying to uh, we've got many campuses, so I try and use our Melbourne people for Melbourne campus and our Northeast people for our Northeast campus, so on and so forth. Um, 
but yeah, look, there's so many factors involved. I, I'll mention a few. Um, so if I'm developing somebody that's new, uh, I want to have a strong team on to compensate for uh, any weakness, for a lack of a better word, just while they're getting used to playing on stage. Um, I want to be able to distribute the weight of that evenly, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. um, so th that's one factor. Also taking into consideration some team dynamics, um, um, thinking about the strength of the, the BVs, I'm thinking about who's on to lead as well, I'm thinking about who's um, on vacation, I'm thinking about um, so so many things, <laughs> really hard to sort so of basically you're trying it. to get a balance between experience and inexperience. Yeah. Having those experienced people that can then mentor the inexperienced ones sure. so that when the band is playing together, um, not everyone's nervous That's or right. yes. afraid of this or that or, oh my goodness, the next song there. There's enough experience there to carry the band and carry the sound and the different chords and the yes. progressions and the key changes, but then at the same time raising up the next group of people yes. um, to get more confident and more skilled. So yep. it's a great balance of it is. experience and inexperience. That's the continual tension I, I, have, to, um, I have to sort of balance out. Um, but I hope that helps you. And secondly, what do you do to keep your voice from getting hoarse? Yes. Pastor. It's a challenge. Isn't it? Especially <laughs> when you're rostered on four services it's in a row huge. on a Sunday. And wow. That can sometimes, you know, be oh, 45 minutes of singing yep. each service. And um, so some of the little things that I do, of course, are warm-ups before singing. Really try not to push my voice too much each service. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're um, sort of singing in reserve, I suppose. Yes. Trying to... A little bit of self-control. Yes, extend yourself mm. rather than... Rah! and then losing your voice in the first service. Never done that. Um, one of the things that I do that, you know, people think that's a bit crazy is I will have iced water. Now, this is interesting. I, yeah, I have iced water after singing. Mm. After each, each time I come off after worship, I'll have a glass of iced water. You have a thought behind that, right? Yes. I mean, it's only my own little theory, but just as any muscle gets used, um, it gets hot. Uh, and so I just want to cool my muscles down and uh, I want to um, help them not to be as inflamed. So I'll have a glass of very cold water and mm. then I'll even put the glass on my neck <laughs> just to try and reduce any swelling and because that's the thing that makes you have vocal cords and your voice not work very well is the inflammation and so mm. then I'll also have things like propolis or a propolis spray. Propolis. And that's a nice herbal remedy for inflammation. Saving grace of singers. Yes and so I use that. Warm downs, like so I might come off stage after leading worship and head out the back um, and then I'll be doing my little sirens or little bubbles on the walk back. Just mm. Keeping those little things happening and mm. yeah, very good. And I think um, your voice is what Pastor Sam said as a muscle. So um, if you're not used to um, singing for four services right now, I think you'll develop an endurance to that too. Yeah, you can't just walk into a gym and lift a hundred kilos. I mean, I probably could, but um, for sure. Yeah, so you work up to that. <laughs> so it's the same with singing. Why are you laughing? No, no, oh, no, so no, 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 not laughing. So you can work up to that. But anyway, moving on to the next question. Uh, ben Laura. Hi, Ben. Hey, Ben. Um, ben has two questions as well. Lots of two question ones. My question is, why did Let's Go, and this is our time, such take such a short amount of time to be produced compared to Endless Praise and Limitless? Mm. Mm, that's an interesting question. Well, these uh, release dates are really out of our hands. It's up to our record label. Mm. And they put these dates out and... We follow suit and so Joth worked very, very hard and the he rest of us. He worked very hard, yes. Um, to try and get these um, release dates met and we did. So we did. that's partly it. And then the other thing was the change over of... Oh, there was a cycle change, yes. Yeah. So the, 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 the dates that we released our album changed so that the way we went about things also changed in accordance with that. So Yeah. Yeah. 
in short. And then Ben also asks, when are you going to release an album recorded live from church? Well, mm. we did that once, didn't mm. we? We did. Or twice. I, twice. I think it was before my time. Do you think? Long time ago. Can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, we did that. Um, Done. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That that's a hard question. That who is a hard knows? question. People who decide knows? these things. And Stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned. And then we've got another uh, just hello from Priscilla uh, Gatha from Indonesia. Hi, Priscilla. She says, "I want to let you guys know that Let's Go is such a blessing to me, and I've been Yay. watching the world from the very beginning, and I'm so blessed. Aww. Thank you guys for sharing your thoughts and helping me to be a musicianary. Aww. Hope I can come to your church and meet you guys one day." P.S. I look forward to your upcoming albums. God bless you. God bless you, Priscilla. God bless you. God bless Thank you. you for the encouragement. Indeed. Well, that's it for uh, this week's episode of The Well. It is. It but is. before we go, we'd love to share with you some little advice for the weekend mm -hmm. because we're believing with you for a great, incredible time with God on the weekend yep. in your churches. And so... I would love to encourage you to do your hair really well. Do it. Do it really well. <laughs> Don't be too crazy, but have fun and present yourself as you would be presenting yourself before God and get dressed for Him this weekend. Yeah, and I'd, I'd encourage you to, um, a little bit random, it's got nothing to do with our hair, but it's not random at all. Why don't you believe for someone to get healed while you're leading praise and worship? this Sunday, why don't you believe for God to do something like properly supernatural yeah. while you lead. So awesome. that's it. We'd yeah. love to leave you with our musicianary statement, which we do every week. Yes. Here it is, coming at you. We are musicianaries, powerful men and women of God that play skillfully unto the Lord, worshipping in spirit and in truth. With a heart of unity, we serve the church locally and around the world with our gifts. We exist to usher the body into a corporate and personal encounter with the living God. Mm. Have a great week, people. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.